and oh my goodness, today's video has been about a year in the making and it's been one that I've been really, really excited to share with you guys, but also I'm like low-key a little embarrassed to show you this doll <laughs> that I've been holding on to for my entire life and sharing with you guys some of the spooky things associated with her, but overall sharing her with you guys in general. If I look like a floating head right now, I apologize, but I am wearing my Haley Reese Friendly Ghost merch hoodie, which is available for you guys now. I have the link at the very top of my description. It is hands down the comfiest sweater, the highest quality, and I have been loving nothing more than seeing you all in it. It makes me so, so, so happy. So you guys are able to get your own hoodie down below. It's like the cutest, coziest thing ever. But <laughs> with that being out of the way, I remember I think it was about, well, I know it was about a year ago. I think it was the first week of October, the first week of 31 days of Halloween last year. I actually did a video on the aging doll, um, which that's still one of my favorite videos I've ever done. It's so spooky, so fascinating. Um, but in that video, I had actually talked about how I had a doll that almost looked like Chucky um, that aged alongside with me. And I believe in another video, I talked about how I had a doll that did some strange things within my haunted house. So since so many of you guys have been requesting that I bring back the Haunted House series before 31 Days of Halloween is over, which Grams and I have some more stories for you before the end of the month, so make sure you stay tuned for that, I figured I would finally share this doll with you, share the history of this doll and what occurred with this doll, especially during the time of my haunted house. So without further ado, let's just get into it because it's pretty spooky. So, for some reason, right when I was born, from like newborn, I always had to twiddle my mom and grandma's hair, twiddle, that sounds like a funny word, twirl my mom and grandma's hair to fall asleep. So I was continuously doing this. I would grab like a piece of their hair and I would twirl it like this. And it was like a comfort thing for me. It made me feel safe, it made me feel comfortable. And from the time where I gained that mobility as a baby to be able to do so, that was what I was always doing, but I wound up always leaving their hair in like the craziest knots and essentially creating my own baby made dreadlocks for them both and they eventually got super super sick of it as much as they loved me. So they were trying to find different alternatives for me to not have to twirl their hair but still have the same calming effect to put me to sleep. So I think it was my very first birthday, I actually received these dolls from my grandpa on my dad's side and they were these twin dolls with like short but a full head of curly blonde hair. And one of them had a pink striped outfit and the other one had a blue striped outfit but they looked exactly the same. So I received these dolls on my first birthday. Now, although I didn't move into my grandparents' haunted house until after my parents split when I was two, um, I spent a lot of time there nonetheless from like baby to, to forever. I've never stopped loving going to my grandparents. <laughs> I was always over there with this doll and instantly this doll became my new twirly comfort thing. So every single night, and every single nap and every single thing that I did, I had this doll and I would be twirling the hair. It was my comfort. I couldn't sleep without it. It was my version of somebody's blankie or teddy bear that made them feel safe and comforted. Now what was great about this doll was that there was two of them. And the reason I'm telling you all these details is because it plays into the story. So the great thing about this doll was that there was two of them. So what they would do was keep the spare one on them. So if they couldn't find this doll somewhere, they had the spare and they would swap it out and it had the same effect. So both of the twins wound up with the hair that I'm about to show you when I finish telling you guys about this doll. Um, so this doll was very often in my haunted house and once my parents split and we moved in, this doll was like one of the most prominent things in the haunted house. Now a lot of the times when I was in the haunted house and I would be playing, this doll was forever with me. So in a lot of my paranormal experiences, a lot of the times that I would have these terrifying, amazing, incredible, unexplainable experiences in my haunted house, 
this doll was either in my arm or somewhere near and around me. So essentially, she was with all of this strange phenomena. Now I named this doll Sleepy Time, and as I'm sure you can tell by now, I've had this doll forever. I still have this doll. Um, but there's some strange things around it. Now, although there were twins, I had for some reason taken more of a liking to the doll in the pink striped outfit rather than the blue striped outfit. So I called the one in the pink striped outfit Sleepy Time and then the other one I thought was Sleepy Time because I was little, but it wasn't my go-to. Now when I was a child, I had a dog that chewed off the toe of Sleepy Time's twin. So if that makes any sense, the blue one that was like my backup one had her toes chewed off. This is also an important detail. Now one day, for some reason, when I got older, I had lost Sleepy Time, the favorite, um, in my haunted house. And nobody could find where on earth this doll went. Nobody had any idea where the doll went. She essentially just disappeared. And like, it was the strangest thing. It wasn't like, oh, where did I place that toy? I don't know, never found again. This was like the doll that was like my comfort in every single situation. So it was a big deal to my family that she just disappeared out of thin air. So everybody searched high to low. Now what's interesting about this is the fact that we knew that it went missing in the home because I had had it earlier that day and then all of a sudden it went missing. So this isn't a case of, oh, the doll was lost out in the world. No, the doll was lost in the home somewhere. So after that, Sleepy Time backup became Sleepy Time number one because Sleepy Time number one disappeared and so now I had this second one. Like I said, the toes were chewed off, so I always knew that it was the other one, but I was a little older when this happened, so like it wasn't the world's biggest deal that it was the backup. I still had the same sense of comfort because I had done the same thing to both of their hair. Now, before I get into all of the crazy, unexplainable, and creepy things that happened surrounding this doll while we lived in the haunted house, I think I should show you the doll. She's Nikki right now, um, and she's covered in so many different things. I can't even tell you. She's been washed, but... This doll's been through hell and back. She is 22 years old and so this is sleepy time and like I told you guys in that video, she most certainly resembles a haunted doll. And also guys, her head spins totally around, which is freaky. Her leg is about to rip off entirely. Her arms are just like barely hanging on and there are her missing toes. Now the way that I used to hold her, you can still tell there's the separation of the hair. I used to hold it like this and twirl the hair, but she used to have luscious locks. So that's her. So like as much as I love her and to this day, like I hold her, I smell her, she still brings like that familiarity and like comfort back. I want you to remember how she looks when you picture the various things I'm about to share with you that happened surrounding this doll because I believe that she truly looks like a haunted doll that I would find on Google and um, she did some pretty freaky stuff. So my grandma will tell you guys when we film our next haunted house video, I'll make sure to have her tell you so you know this is authentic, this is 100% the truth. Um, there's one occasion that she remembers specifically surrounding sleepy time. There was one day where my grandma was actually home alone and for once she wasn't babysitting like any other grandkids. So that was a really, really rare thing. My grandma was like the home of children, like all of the grandkids, all of the neighbors, like everybody was always there. And for this one occasion, interestingly enough, nobody was there. Um, so my grandma was enjoying a cup of tea. She was playing her game. She used to play this game, Pop It. She was playing Pop It, relaxing, and she heard child's laughter from my bedroom in her house. And she remembers sitting back and being like, what? And she's listening and she distinctively hears this child's laughter coming from my room in the house. So immediately, this confuses her because she's not supposed to have any children in the home. She knows this, but at the same time, she can very, very clearly hear children's laughter. So she gets up and rushes to the bedroom and oddly enough, one thing I should know is my grandma likes to keep things very, very, very clean. Um, growing up her home was perfect, my bed was made, her bed was made, everything was clean and the toys were in a specific area. It was always organized. 
And when she opened the door to the bedroom, the laughter subsided. There was no more laughter, but sleepy time was away from all the other dolls that were properly placed and laying in the middle of the room. And that's like one occasion that she remembers where she was like, that was unexplainable, that was crazy. And so she picked up the doll, she put her back on my bed and nothing else happened that day. Like it wasn't like it was a continuous thing, but it was something that stood out in her mind where she was like, I know 1000% I heard children's laughter in that room, there's no denying it. And then this doll's out of place. Now I should note, I had left early in that morning there was nobody else in the house and she had made my bed and put the doll there. So it's not like I had left her in a strange place. The doll had moved. So after this, the years went on and all of a sudden I lost sleepy time replacement. And so this doll just like disappeared. We couldn't find it anywhere, but I was older at this time. So it wasn't the world's biggest deal. People weren't like scavenging the house looking for it. It was just like, where on earth did that doll go? And it was something that bothered me in times where like I was going through tough times and like I wanted that sense of comfort, but I was old enough that it didn't necessarily bother me. Now, as I got even older, we moved out of my grandparents' home and my mom had got us our own house. Um, so we moved to our own house and I remember when we were packing, unpacking, sorry, all of our things, I thought to myself, where's sleepy time? Like, I was just curious and it wasn't anywhere and that's when we realized, wow, it really is gone. Um, and I always kind of wish that I still had her because I like to keep, I still do, boxes of like keepsakes and like special things and childhood things and things that mean a lot to me and I would have liked to have kept her. Couldn't find her anywhere. Gone, gone. Here's where this gets strange. Okay, <laughs> flash forward to about 15. I was going through one of the most difficult times in my life. I was dealing with extreme bullying. I was dealing with really bad thoughts and contemplating things that nobody should ever contemplate in life and just at like my lowest point. That's when, I swear to goodness, I went to sleep one night, I woke up you guys, and this doll was laying in the bed next to me. Like I can't even make this up, I swear over my grandpa who was deceased, who I love more than anything, I woke up to this doll in my bed next to me. I sit up, I'm like, what? I'm looking, I look at the toes, okay, I know it's sleepy time replacement. So I knew it wasn't the original, which would have been even stranger. But I just assumed that like my mom or my grandma had found it and like even though I was older, like given it to me to like remember a really happy time in my life and make me feel better. So I asked both my mom, my grandma, everybody. Nobody, like everybody swears they nobody put that doll in my bed. And it's not something where it's like funny anymore and they'll still say, I have no idea where that doll came from. I have no idea how you found it. In fact, they thought that I had found it and like said that it woke up next to me, I don't know. Long story short, the doll just reappeared. Now like speaking of the doll appearing, I'm gonna add this in, but I will say that it was camp and this may have very well just been a prank. But when I was younger, I went to camp and brought my doll, which like in hindsight, Haley, come on, but I brought my doll. And nobody really liked my doll to begin with. I mean, growing up to like all my friends who would see this doll were like, get this doll out of your room. Like I cannot sleep with this in here. Like there's something scary about that doll. I think it's just how she looks, but one of the girls woke up screaming and my doll was on the rafters like above her bed and I assumed that somebody had done it as a prank and she swore that like she didn't do it. Everybody in the room was so, or in the cabin I should say, was so afraid of my doll that they like screamed and cried and told the counselor that, like it wasn't allowed to sleep in the cabin anymore because it had moved. Initially I thought that it was a prank on me, like trying to scare me that my doll was moving around the rafters and like moving around the place. But like they actually made the counselor take my doll because nobody was going to sleep if it was in there. And I just feel like unless that was an elaborate plan for them to get the doll out, why would they do that? But I don't know the authenticity of how it ended up in the rafters. All I know is I didn't put it there. What I will say about this doll is you guys know I had lung surgery on my lung and that I have really bad lungs. And when I was younger, I had super, super, super bad asthma. I still do and I had a really bad case of pneumonia, so I was admitted into the hospital. Um, I brought my doll with me, and there was one occasion where my mom had wheeled me downstairs to go get Tim Hortons, and I had my doll with me. And a woman came up to my mom, who claimed to be a medium, and she took one look at my doll, and essentially told my mom that a ton of spirits had interacted with this doll, that the doll carried a ton of energy, but it wasn't negative. And my mom found that super interesting considering we grew up in an incredibly haunted house and given my grandma's story with the one time with the laughter and the fact that I always had it with me when I had paranormal experiences, 
that would make sense. With that being said, I do feel like strange things have happened around my doll. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the doll was in the haunted house a lot. There was a lot of children that haunted that house as well. And it kind of correlates with a few stories that Grandma and I are going to tell you guys leading up to Halloween this week. Well, you guys, that was super requested. I'm sorry that like I didn't have anything better to share with you. She doesn't walk around on her own. Um, she definitely isn't possessed. But a few strange things have happened with her. She was in the haunted house and so many of you guys have been requesting for a year now to see her, hear her story, and find out more about her. Like I said, I've been seeing all of your requests for more haunted house videos and I have been saving them for this final week leading up to Halloween. I can't believe 31 Days of Halloween is like in its final stretch, but I have saved the best for last. So I'm so, 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 so excited to share that with you guys and Grams will be making an appearance this year. If you guys are new to my channel or you're just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. I post a ton of videos, so I don't want you to miss when I upload. And please give this video a big thumbs up. If you did enjoy it, it makes my heart super, super happy when you guys do that. So please do that. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you.